Hi, this is Gary Auden, and welcome to this Educast, your next decked phone. And this is brought to you by Telecom Reseller and SNOM. Today, I'll be speaking as moderator. The other person on this Educast is Tommy Lee, the president of SNOM Americas. So Tommy, let me talk about what we're going to talk about first, and then we can get into the nitty gritty. Not everyone knows what a decked phone is. And I think a lot of people sort of put it into the category of just cordless phones, and it's much more than that. Then we're going to talk about designing decked phone networks, deployment recommendations, how do you assess the facilities you have, and their capability of supporting decked phone operations, which is wireless. Resolving those design issues, and talking about some case studies, some installation examples to show you this is more than just cordless phones. You could have an entire network of decked phones working wirelessly where you don't need QoS and independent of your IT network. So Tommy, let's start off with what is a decked phone? Um, what a decked phone is, is uh, for those who don't understand what decked is, <clears throat> decked is a wireless technology that has really been designed for, for communicating your voice <clears throat> across a wireless network. Uh, it's a radio technology that uses TDMA. Uh, this is not leading edge stuff, but what I would say that it is the most advanced technology for transmitting voice over, over wireless network. And, and for those that don't understand DECT, we have an outline of DECT uh, for your slides right here, which is Digital Enhanced Cordless Telecommunications. Uh, and it's used throughout Europe and a lot of modern uh, wireless phones that are sold in the home today. Now, the DECT phone technology was built specifically for telephony, wasn't it? Uh, that is correct. Uh, in fact, uh, when it initially started off, it was really designed around you know, home use here in the States where a lot of people plugged in and, then, and, and, and as the wireless technology advanced, we end up now with the latest phones offering the most advanced tech, deck technology which gives you maximum range you know, throughout your home and maybe even including your backyard in, in many cases. And, uh, but as, as deck evolves, we are now able to grow that single base station into a multi-base station roaming environment for end users. Let's talk about why deck technology now. Yeah, the reason why we chose deck, uh, especially for IP phones, is that, is that uh, it really combines the best of two worlds. You have the wireless technology which has been designed to really enhance uh, voice performance and voice communication over a wireless network. And at the same time, it communicates all that voice data into a wired base station. So number one, you get the best wireless performance of voice in addition to getting the best wired communication to transmit your voice data across the network. You know, why deck wireless? Some of the items that you see is that most decked uh, handsets today will easily support 100 meters or 300 feet of, 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 of range from a single base station. And I'll actually illustrate in future slides that depending on what your, your environment is, you may get a lot more or perhaps in some cases a lot less than the, these specified uh, parameters. Let's talk about that because I'm sure there's some challenges in trying to design for decked uh, networks. Absolutely. Uh, what you see in front of you here are some of the challenges of DECT. Uh, you'll note that in this uh, two picture frames, you'll actually see, um, you know, wired gates, uh, or in this, in other cases, very thin wired walls, where each of these metal frames, you know, can act as an interference uh, with DECT technology. It's not that you won't get zero, but the optimum range of having the most ideal open environment you know, will be hampered some. And these are the things that you have to consider when you're deploying tech wireless deck technology in your customer sites. Let's talk about some of the more ideal situations. Absolutely. Now, in an ideal deck range, you know, you may have an open office environment. Uh, this right here, the picture to your left, is really an open environment where you can actually have a whole school full of uh, open cubes. And in that case, you know, your, your range can even go well beyond uh, what the status specifications are. On the picture to the right, 
You might have some things like standard firewall or wooden furniture that you know offer minimal challenges in terms of being able to block that. So depending on what your office environment is, you know, if it's metal sheets or in an open range like this, you're going to get a variety of different performance level from each uh, base station. With the popularity of the open office, DEX seems to have more capability than with the older closed office. Is that correct? That is true. Uh, many offices today are actually going for a more open shared environment, in essence enabling, enhancing uh, not only face-to-face -face interaction, but you know, people are breaking out of their offices and, and, and going into an open office environment for just overall better communication, not only for DEC, but just from person to person as well. One of the things I think is important is the next page we're getting to is a multi-cell environment, not something the usual person thinks about with cordless phones. That's correct. Um, in this campus environment, you know, we have well over 50 bases that are installed, both indoor and outdoor coverage. And one of the things you may want to look at is setting up redundancies, and as well as looking at uh, the different obstacles that are in front of you. Now, looking at the lower right-hand uh, corner of this picture, uh, you'll note that that building actually has very thick cement walls. So if you wanted coverage on that lower west side of this picture, what you'll see is that, is that it may make a lot more sense to install a clear side base station way to the left that, you, that I noted on the arrow here, giving it a clear line of communication going to the far end of the campus down south, as opposed to having the nearest closest uh, base station that's nearest to the wall, but then yet its signals are being blocked by very thick coverage. So even though you may have thick coverage, you know, there are ways around it by perhaps adding another base station and providing it with a clear site, giving the base station some level of redundancy as you build out your network. Well, DECT is a radio technology, so therefore you've got to look at radio coverage, you know, the physical area, both horizontal and vertical. How do we deal with that? That is correct. Now, you know, the way the radio technology works is, is that for those that you might see, the handset for our DEC stations or our DEC systems can actually be used as a hard measuring device. I mean, they sell a lot of commercial measuring devices, but for those that don't have those commercial radio DEC measuring devices, you can actually use the handset to measure the signal levels throughout different locations of the campus, whether you go upstairs, downstairs, and down the hall and left, just to make sure that you have ample coverage. And I'll get into more detail on why you need ample coverage for all these different base stations on your handset. Well, we're now getting into the assessment goals. What are we proposing to do with this environment? Correct. Uh, one of the things you want to do is establish some level of redundancy per base. Now, in most cases, uh, if you set all the bases on one specific level, um, if one base station fails and that serves as a middle repeater, everything else on the south end of that failed base station will end up uh, failing as well. So what you may want to do uh, for redundancy, if that is important to you, is set up some redundant base station so that should one fail by any chance, a smaller segment of that network will be affected versus having the entire or having half your campus uh, being affected by a blackout. Another thing you want to do is measuring the approximate uh, signal level. We always recommend a minus 70 dB as a minimum. Now, for those who don't understand what decibels mean, the more negative you go, the worse case it gets. So minus 70 dB, minus 60 is good, minus 50 is even better. But going minus 70 or 80 or going minus 80 would be worse because in that case you get a lower signal level for those that don't understand. Now, you provided a slide here of the do's and don'ts. Let's talk about the do's first. Absolutely. Um, I talked about putting your handset into a, uh, a measuring device and you could set that menu just by doing you know, star 47 star and that will put the device in a particular handset mode. Once you do that, you pair that handset up with a base station, and you can look to see how far that base station is relative to that specific handset, and you can actually pair it up with other bases so that you can get a good reference point on why these base stations work best together, you know, to up until like a minus 70 dB rating on your radio.
Is this sort of like cell phones where I can be connected to one tower, but if that tower goes down, I connect to another tower without moving? You're absolutely right. In fact, uh, yeah, should a tower go down just based on maintenance alone, uh, many sites that are perhaps in a, in a populated metro area, your phone will automatically route out to a different uh, uh, cell site, or in this case, a deck base station, which will make that, that outage invisible to you, should you have redundancy. So this is a lot more sophisticated than what I have at my house, just a deck phone. That is correct. Uh, in most people's homes, you're, you're, you're probably well covered just with one single base station that covers most people's homes. Let's talk about the don'ts. Okay. Now, in always the don'ts is, is in essence, you know, stop the guesswork. It's a lot easier to possibly put a base station in somewhere. Now, if you think about it, the easiest place to put a, a ba the, this first base station is always in the corner because that's where a lot of the IT closets are located. They're never located in the central office where you're actually located in the middle. Now, when you think about the spherical uh, deployment of the actual signal, when you put the base station in the corner, you're allowing people furthest from that base station to have the least amount of signal. So what you want to do, in essence, is to extend uh, the base station installation in the center of the office as much as possible if that is a single base station deployment. If you have multiple base stations, then that's not, it's, it's far less of an issue, but on a single base station, placement is very key. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you don't want to go below 70. In this case, you know, don't take minus 80 dB and use that as, as acceptable. Uh, some other things that if you're in a high traffic area, people's bodies also become an obstacle to it so that if you don't have the base station raised up or if you have it based on body level, you have to consider that people walking by or a traffic of people can be a, a potential problem. So these are the things that you have to think about when you're deploying a wireless base station. Yeah, let's go into the, the three slides we have next, which really helps illustrate this. Uh, first question about multi-cell is, you, what if the base does not join the multi-cell? What's, what's dealing with that? Yeah, some of the real fundamentals, you can really knock away 90% of a lot of the faults that happen. First and foremost is you really have to make sure that the firmware versions uh, between all of the base stations are identical. Uh, very often, a person might deploy a base station on the one revision or perhaps the latest revision that have been updated, and they go, ah, I need another one. They may get another one, and all of a sudden update it to a later one or come with factory default. It is really important to make sure that all of the base stations come with matching firmware so that everything matches as it, as it puts on a network. Now, you'll notice that when these base stations are close together, the settings that you put on the master base station will end up automatically networking throughout all of the others. So just because you set up multiple stations, if they're all networked correctly, you set up one and that setting will automatically be networked throughout all of the other uh, the base stations as well. I noticed in the next point you're making, the bottom right side shows that the coverage area is not overlapping well. What's, what does this mean? That's true. Um, in this case, you really have to think about about you know how how far deep into the circle that that this happens and as I said earlier, people that walk by the less of an interface that you have amongst the base stations, the less network your system will end up becoming. And so if it was slowly networked together and it happened to be at eye level, which what what most stations are, they're typically put on a shelf somewhere. But if a person were to walk by or three or four people walked in parallel at the same time, that could interrupt that small area whereby all of a sudden it becomes partially interrupted and people that are on phones will automatically have their, their phones uh, cut off just based on human traffic. You know, that's just one of the items that you want to do. I noticed in the third question here, we're talking about synchronizing data or not synchronizing data. Why is that important? Um, it's very important because if you have 50 base stations deployed and they're not networked, you're going to spend a lot of time doing reinventing that same network over and over again on the different uh, base stations when you log in. It's always best that when these base stations are put together, you make a change on one base station, and that change will automatically trickle in to all of the rest of the base stations. A very easy way to do that is to test if your network is done, is do a simple factory change, like somehow change the country, for example, and you notice that if you change from 
English to, say, the German language, all of a sudden you'll, you'll notice that the rest of the uh, base stations, of course, will end up turning into, you know, the, the, the German language in particular. And if you change it back to English, they will all trickle back to English as well. It, it makes managing your wireless network from a very simple interface that rather than having to manage each one individually. I like this picture on the next page where you show a uh, large hospital campus that can actually support all of this? That's correct. In fact, uh, you know, this is a very large hospital campus that we installed in Europe. It goes well beyond the size of, of your average home or, in essence, a small house. And this uh, case study site actually installed a wireless network, you know, throughout their campus networks. And you can see that uh, I think we have some of the stats on the next page that might be able to share with you the, the, the level of sophistication you can have while being able to also offer a very simple interface to manage your deck system. And I also notice you used the word redundancy here and demonstrate that for us. Yes, absolutely. Um, I don't think I have the redundancy slides here, but in many buildings uh, we have up to 600 handsets with 100% roaming coverage. And what that means is that depending on which areas you go into, you know, you can set up one if not two different base stations that these stations can interface with each other so that, you know, if a small room were to go down, you basically isolate the down area down to about 100 meters or 300 feet for that matter rather than having an entire wing of a building if they're all serially connected. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't do that. You can have it, but then yet, you know, there are redundancies of perhaps putting in additional base stations so that you offer that level of redundancy, you know, throughout your client network. You're not just in the DEC phone business. You're in the IP phone business. Would you spend a little time talking about your product lines? Absolutely. Um, you know, our, our, deck, our deck lines, which is very popular, uh, is really complemented by what we call our, our, our base technology. We've been doing... Uh, you know, desk phones for actually coming close to 20 years now. And uh, we have a whole line of desk phones, a both vertical model and Euro European flat standing models with sidecars, really providing uh, our partners out there who want to deploy IP phones uh, with the largest variety possible with their clients. So we have mobile units as well as deck units. Let's talk more about the mobile units. Absolutely. Um, to the left, we have the M700 multi-cell. Uh, this is the classic multi-cell unit that you can install multiple, 50, you know, 10, 100. You could even install many of these things throughout your, 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 your client's requirements, which is what I talked about. Uh, on the other hand, you have the M325 single cell, which is ideally suited for the small office. Uh, in that case, the small office will be able to yield that same single cell and throughout those two base station units, the single cell comes coupled with uh, what we call the entry-level uh, deck handset. Now, both of those units can actually use three versions of handset. One is the M25, uh, the other is the M65, which is what we recommend for commercial environments. That comes with a, a higher power lithium-ion battery, as well as belt clips and more. Uh, and for those for more ruggedized environments, we also offer an M85, which takes the M65 and actually hard coats it uh, with a strong rubber so that if you have an environment where the phone is often dropped or, or, or hit against the wall, you know, these phones will be able to take far more punishment than the M65. You have a couple of useful accessories, and the first thing I'd like to ask about, why would I want a repeater in this environment? Oh, the repeater is extremely important. So take, for example, if you have an office environment that's a little larger, than the range of a single base station, that repeater can enhance uh, the actual deck range of not only the single base station, which is the M300, it could also enhance the, the base station of the M700. And here's the reason why. Once you pair up a repeater with any of these base stations, you no longer need to have an Ethernet cable going to that specific location. So you may have an area that doesn't have uh, a LAN cable available or a POE cable available, but you do have a power outlet. So what you can do is pair up this repeater to that specific base station and use this as a supplemental deck, uh, deck repeater or expander for that particular location. And that will give it uh, some capability. The only cost behind that is that every time you use a repeater, you also sacrifice one 
uh, concurrent call performance unit. That's it. And then the POE adapter for the M700, uh, the M700 only uses uh, you know, a POE connection. So in cases where you don't have a POE switch, you can use this adapter to basically power that switch from a, a power source. What I'd like to move on to, and this is important, is the resources available to those interested in either buying or selling the SNOM product line. We also have some contact information here for both SNOM America and SNOM in Berlin. And I'd like to thank Tommy Lee here for the information he's given to us today. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you very much, Gary.